Today's video is going to be a heart to heart. I want to let you know how I became a data scientist without really any job experience. It's been a really long journey and it's been a story with a lot of twists and turns along the way. And I hope that this gives you some sort of hope and lets you know that you can do it too. As long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a doctor. I think it really goes back to I wanted to be the perfect child and whenever I said I wanted to be a doctor, people would always be really happy and say, wow, like you should really go for that. And I held on to that for a lot of my life. So freshman year of college, uh, I changed my major a few times. I went from biology to biological sciences to nutrition and then I think I finally landed on psychology and that felt right to me and then I subsequently ended up taking a lot of the pre-med classes because I was on the pre-med track and that was what I was going to pursue until drum roll US immigration <laughs> came and ruined all my future plans so in order to pursue medical school in America, a lot of the medical schools require that you are a US permanent resident or a US citizen. And I was neither of those. Especially if you're from India, it's really, really difficult to get your permanent residency. I've been here since I was nine and I was waiting over well over a decade, but really an unnerving process. At this point, I'm a psychology major and I am pretty confused on what I need to do in the future and what my career was going to be. And so I started talking to some of my psychology professors and getting advice on if I ended up doing a PhD in psychology, what that could look like. I was really interested in IO psychology. And so I was thinking about what that could be like. So I talked to a few PhD students and honestly, a lot of them, they did not look like they were having a good time. And so I did a lot of research on just generally what the PhD track was going to look like. And it really seemed very long and winding and I wasn't quite sure where I would end up if I pursued that, especially since I wasn't sure if I wanted to do academia. And so at that point I thought, okay, what else could I possibly do? And I started doing a lot of research online about different master's programs I could get into without any work experience. I was looking at the MBA at first and then I started seeing that you kind of need a few years of experience for that. And so I found the master's in management, master's programs all over the internet. And then I started digging further into just kind of where the world was heading, what the trends were in the economy and it really seemed like data was going to be extremely huge. There's going to be a lot of data available and someone needed to analyze that, right? And I was also reading that there was definitely a shortage in data professionals and then at that point I thought, okay, this is somewhere that I could add value and it seems to be really taking off. And so I switched my research from master's in management programs to master's in business analytics programs. And I started looking at some of the courses that were available and thinking, okay, this seems pretty interesting. I was still not fully convinced. <laughs> so I ended up taking a trip to India between my second and third year of college. And I, during that trip, I was reading a book by Cal Newport. It was so good, they can't ignore you. And while I was reading that book, there was a concept that he talked about, about taking small bets. Essentially, this master's in business analytics program, how I thought about it would be that it was a small bet because it's typically a year if I tried it out and I really hated it, I could do something else. And so after reading this book, I was convinced that this would this was a small bet that I wanted to take. I started applying to a lot of business schools, also made a decision to just graduate early. Um, I took a lot of the college courses I needed kind of as a senior and through AP credit. So I was about a year ahead and I made the decision that I was going to graduate a year early. So I finished my university in three years and that third year, I was just applying to a lot of universities. I'm not going to go into 
the universities I applied to and kind of the, what the application process was like. I think I will make a whole separate video on that topic because I think it's worth devoting a whole video to and going into a lot of detail. But regardless, I applied to a lot of universities, not that many actually, just a handful, and um, I got admitted to honestly my dream school, sort of clip of when I visited, um, really just loved it. Okay, so I started the program, I really struggled in the beginning, but I persevered. <laughs> and I uh, learned some really good skills and started job hunting. And then when I thought everyone, everything was going just as it was supposed to, boom, the pandemic hit March of 2020 and I was going to be graduating in May of 2020. And oh my gosh, I mean, it just wrecked. <laughs> it wrecked everything. And obviously we had no idea what was coming towards us. Um, and people were losing their lives and it was just such a devastating period of time. And that was a time that I was also recruiting, right? Like I, I had to get a job to support myself because I incurred a lot of debt um, while I pursued my degree. And so I was recruiting and I got my offers rescinded literally two or three or yeah or more. It's just every recruiter that I was speaking to was saying, hey, we can't continue down this road because we're pausing everything and freezing everything. And so it's just, I went from having leads to having no leads and it was honestly a very dark period. Um, yeah, it was really hard trying to stay safe during the pandemic, trying to job search. And I was a international student and so that made things even harder. And also, yeah, that's a whole another video. I could talk about that um, very in depth. But um, I was on my F1 and I, if I didn't have a job within 90 days of graduating, I would have to leave the country, point blank. So I was under a lot of stress um, in getting a job and I really didn't know what the future was going to look like. May of 2020, I end up graduating virtually. And at that point, there was a program happening where a few undergrads put together a program over the summer for students that had lost internships or you know really couldn't get anything because of the pandemic and connected people with different companies that were wanting talent. Really fortunate, I got an internship at a startup and that summer of 2020, I worked for a couple months a blockchain kind of startup and idea and we wrote a paper and learned a lot about the blockchain industry and it was cool to have something that I was working on while I continued to job search. And one of the positions I was recruiting for was through my undergrad connection. I had messaged a lot of people from my undergrad that were working in the data and analytics space and I connected with an amazing person, honestly, who was so helpful and he let me know that uh, there was going to be a position opening up at their company and he was going to be managing that person. Went through the recruitment process and honestly was really amazing. Um, the process was pretty streamlined. Um, there was a technical interview, there was um, kind of getting to know the VP I was going to be working for and yeah, that was really it and I ended up getting the job. That was my first big break. So while I was working as a sales strategy and analytics associate, I was living at home. I had $55,000 in debt from my grad school. So I moved in with my parents. It was also peak pandemic, so no one was doing anything anyway. Everyone was home. So moved in with my parents. I basically saved all, yeah, every paycheck and <laughs> paid off my loans in less than a year. I ended up working at that company for eight months. Um, I was doing sales strategy and analytics and I was really loving it. Honestly, this working at this role kind of made me realize that, yeah, I do really have a passion for data and I love kind of digging into it, pulling out the insight and helping companies solve problems. It was also really cool because this role gave me a lot of visibility to C-suite executives and I really loved 
seeing what the questions in their head were and then trying to see if I could help. I realized, yeah, I really do like the data space. But sales strategy and analytics was still not exactly what I was looking for. I was still looking for other roles and then I ended up interviewing and getting the job for my current role, which is in workforce strategy and analytics and really the people analytics role. I wanted to be in consulting and in people analytics and this was what I really wanted. <laughs> and I was so lucky to have gotten the job and that's what I do right now. Um, I help companies solve problems related to their workforce using data. We do a lot of different kinds of work and I could see the direct impact that my work and the work of my teammates and our practice has on the lives of employees in different companies that um, we work with and so it's so cool getting to see that. And so it took me going through two jobs to land exactly where I wanted to. Especially if you're a non-traditional applicant, I would say that that's really normal. So now I'm 22, I'm almost 23, and that's what's happened so far. <laughs> Hopefully give you an idea of how I got to where I am, and now I'm lucky enough to share my story with everyone that's watching. Thank you for being here. I hope this gives you a bit more insight on sort of how I got here, how you can get to a similar place. I'm so glad I took that small bet because I'm really grateful that this is what my life is. I have a career that I love. I can really see myself growing as a consultant. I think, yeah, this career really makes sense for me. I'm starting to build my future right now and I'm lucky that this field is able to give me that. Again, thank you so much for watching and I just, my heart's so full that there's just been so much engagement and I really have you to thank for that. So thank you for sticking with me and I hope we got to know each other a little bit better through this video. And please take a second to subscribe. I really, really, really appreciate that.